rain, falling every day all over the planet. Each raindrop formed like a pearl around a speck of airborne dirt, a grain of sea salt, so that rain as it falls cleans the skies. Moisture sucked up by the sun and falling again as rain, the essential cycle of life on Earth. But when thunderclouds burst, quite incredible quantities of water can fall. In less than an hour of torrential rain, a quiet river can turn into a flash flood, the weather's biggest killer. Yesterday, Linmouth was a peaceful holiday resort. Today, it is a ruin. In August 1952, a flash flood swept away the heart of this Devon village. Three months worth of rain had fallen in a single day. As dusk fell, a wall of water 40 feet high roared down through the village, hurling trees with the force of battering rams. On a sunny summer afternoon, it's hard to imagine that Linmouth could ever be threatened by its two picturesque rivers. In 1952, it was packed with visitors, as it is today. There was almost nothing to prepare them for what was to come. I thought it was quite an eerie experience. It was a gunpowdery color of sky, you know, something that made you feel you had to go home. A sudden wall of water came down, colossal by the water. It made the ground tremble as the rocks thundered down the river. We rushed outside the shop. As we got outside, we were washed onto these railings with this wave of water, which was, came down way steep. You could hear the rocks rolling all round, and people calling out, screaming out. You could hear the houses crashing, you know? Repeated flashes of lightning uh, lit up the scene. And in a flash of lightning, you could see that there were different colored layers of vapor above the water, ranging from dark brown near the water up to light yellow and beyond above. And there was this, this strong smell, not an unpleasant smell, one of wet earth rather than slimy mud, you know? So I was then in the main stream of the water, a telephone kiosk alongside me went over as well. And it floated with the air still inside it, so I grabbed hold of the telephone kiosk and went down the road with the telephone kiosk. And as I got near back towards where my, my wife was, were hanging onto these railings, I was calling out to her. I saw deep freeze floating by, and I heard Norman calling me. And I put out my hand to where the voice came from, and he grabbed it. She virtually saved my life, really. More water flowed down through Linmouth that night than normally flows down the Thames in three months. Above the tremendous din, you could even hear screams of one family in particular, whole family that went with their house. I saw these two ladies, they were clinging onto the bridge in a sea of water. I thought myself, well, I've had it this time, but they most certainly have. Unfortunately, they were washed down the river. They went out to sea. They were lost. We'd look out the window, and all of a sudden, we'd see these shafts of light. Beams go up into the air, and then sort of go murky and go out. It was the cars being washed away, and it was where the lights, the water made the contact for the lights for a short while, and the headlights came on, and then eventually, 34 people died that night. The youngest, a baby, just 13 weeks old. Flash floods are so destructive because rain is so heavy. Flood water flowing at 20 miles per hour is not four, but 16 times more powerful than water flowing at five miles per hour. Flash floods kill hundreds every year. Half of them in cars they think will save them. Just two feet of water can rip a car from the road and send it swirling away.
flash floods hit without warning. For thunderclouds can make huge quantities of rain in a terrifyingly short time. One hot July Saturday in 1976, these clouds grew to twice the height of normal clouds in less than one hour. Then they dropped 10 inches of rain on the Big Thompson River Basin in Colorado. Downstream, it wasn't even raining. Even in winter, the Big Thompson is only a trickle. But within its ice is locked the 20-year memory of a community and its sense of disbelief. Uh, the sheriff had called me and said we had had reports that the Big Thompson River, they had some flooding up above. And that kind of surprised me because uh, I told him, I said, well, we were just at the river. And it's this normal level. It's six inches deep and crystal clear. So I got my flashlight and walked over the edge of the river and looked down at this little creek. And all I saw was a torrent of water. It looked like the waves crashing in the ocean. They were just huge. And there was these propane tanks. And they were just like they were corks flipping down the river. They had whistle and sing and gurgle when they would go underneath the water. And all this was washing up, and it was washing over against that part of the mountain there, too, and slamming back up like a big, big wave coming back. It wasn't water. It was like boiling lava. A car would appear in a bubble, come up to the surface with the lights on. You would see uh, people waving and flashing lights and windows roll down and screaming for help. And then the car would disappear in the next roll of water. The Nicholson family lived here, Barbara and Howard and five young children. Howard took 10-year-old Christy to help an elderly neighbor, Mrs. Bailey. This is how forceful the water was. Her dress, there was almost nothing left of her dress. And so I, I remember going up to her and trying to pull down what little was left of her dress. And this is what is just really weird, because it's like I turned and turned back, and they were gone. They were gone. Their neighbors, Bob and Beverly Graham, only realized something was wrong when they saw a bridge come crashing past their house on a wave of water. They hurried to get their two little girls to safety away from the river. As we were going out the back door, another tremendous surge of water came by. It's the surge that carried away my wife and daughters. I barely made it to the house, and I could no longer see any of my family. I saw some boulders the, the size of trucks rolling in, in the water end over end, and there was no stopping them. I mean, they just continued to roll. Pieces of houses, uh, vehicles, cars and pickups, uh, travel trailers washing by. Some of, some of the cars still had their lights on. One or two of them, I saw people in them trying to, to ride it out, but they were being tumbled about in these, in these surges. As the sun rose the following morning, the people of the canyon saw what the rain had done. 418 homes had been completely destroyed. 52 businesses had been wiped out. 35 and a half million dollars worth of damage had been done. To give you an idea of the force of water that could emulsify a vehicle, that's what it did. They would just find piles of twisted metal and not even be able to identify a vehicle. As soon as it got light, the whole family walked down the highway, walked together to see if the house was still here. And then when we saw that it wasn't, we just saw it. That's the first time I've see, I seen my father cry. We just stood there, we just, you know, devastated. As the days went by, 139 bodies were pulled from the wreckage. The flood had treated them cruelly. Many were so badly battered, they were unrecognizable. Among the dead, Bob Graham's wife, Beverly, and his two-year-old daughter, Lisa. And of his nine-year-old daughter, Teresa, no trace has ever been found. As we grow up, we, we kind of take it for granted that our parents will get old and die before us, but it is pretty uncommon for you to lose your children. 
and to lose them very suddenly, and that's the, the toughest thing to deal with. And I've talked to other people who have done the same as I, and they too feel handicapped. Only way I know how to describe it. You, you realize in, in just how powerless a human is against the forces of Mother Nature if she decides to do something this drastic. And yes, you end up with a very deep respect for nature and its forces.